It is Elena, ElenaOdessa.com. I pray you are well. And I am well. And I just wanted to share a little bit about my wellness. <laughs> so I just had an awesome, awesome weekend. I participated in Reasons to Rhymes, Mo Soul, which is Josephus III's um, poetry troupe that kind of goes around to schools, to libraries, to um, the Cultural Arts Center on Friday night for some adult like erotic poetry and then on um, Saturday afternoon free poetry for the people in the park. Um, and I just, I, I, it was a very awakening experience for me all the way around. And so I don't know if a lot of you know it or not, but I have pretty much up to this point been something of a, a closet poet. And, you know, not that I don't go out and, um, you know, do the open mics here and there. Um, not that I don't share at churches and, you know, things of that nature, but I have very much been about protecting my comfort zone. And so um, this weekend really brought me out of my comfort zone in so many different ways. The um, We went to the elementary school and so I led a little miniature, min, miniature poetry workshop with the um, fourth graders at Blueford Elementary and that was very interesting because um, and so the, the quote Josephus says for the, the weekend was that people with little faces freak me out. And they do. Or they did. Or they do and I'm coming out of it. I don't know what, what, what the issue is. But it's like, I mean, little people that I know is a wonderful thing. But just kind of, you know, getting in their space and feeling comfortable in their space. They, they intimidate me. They do. And so, um, you know, we did acrostics with their names, um, you know, using the, the first letter of their name to either come up with an adjective that described them or either a phrase that described them. And it was cool. You know, they all had their little dictionaries out and stuff after um, a good 10 minutes into it. And so that was wonderful. And I will always be indebted to Mrs. Lil Mars, who actually put her name on the board and did the um, the demonstration, you know, the, the example of, of, of what I was talking about. Because, I mean, I was telling them, you know, and they were just looking at me. I was like, an acrostic is one, two, three, four, and five. And the children were looking at me like, hmm, is that so? And so, um, anyway, there's, there's the running joke that they ate my legs up to the knees. So I was able to um, stumble out of there with... <laughs> with some dignity but um there was some some um some flesh eating that went on as well and then we went to the library and, and that was wonderful that was not so much out of my comfort zone as the the fourth grade thing but then erotic night so we get there and i had just all week you know i had just been stressing out about i am not an erotic poet I don't, I, I just, I don't have no, you know, erotic stuff. And, and it was like, you know, flipping through the book. And then I was like, okay, well, I can do the husband poems. Because, I mean, you know, there's about a few husband poems in the book that are about my wait for him. And so I did When I Was a Liar, which is the, you know, the, the, the piece about when I was in that fleshy place. And then I did um, Husband, which is about... Um, something about my thigh bridge is a diamond mind. I wait for my husband, I wait for the one as these other miners come to mine from this place and then something about some milk deposits and some diamonds that I wouldn't, that I'm willing to trade for his milk deposits. And so this is my concept of, of erotic. But I did not really feel comfortable in my concept of erotic because I know what other people's concept of erotic is. And so there was a container that I was kind of in with that. Well, in steps Woman Storm, who, um, I mean, she just, she was so committed to what she had to say, the way that she had to say it. And there was absolutely not one ounce of eroticism in her demonstration. I mean, she basically shows up at this erotic poetry 
branded event with like five Jesus poems in her pocket. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, can you do that? And so I'm looking around at the promoter like, can she do that? But the thing is, is that yes, you know, you can, you can do, you can be yourself. And I just, I learned, I learned so much from that. And there was just something in me that just opened up. And I started to just see that the one that is restricting me is me. It is, it is self-censorship. And it is about definitely coming from a, a rule-based, um, strict, oriented, restricting punishment, giving, permission, taking. I mean, you know, you can just flesh it out with all those just no, you know, that over and over and over and over and over. And so it's like you, you, you criticize yourself into a place where when you are free, you don't recognize the freedom because of the habits of control and, and habits of restriction that are there. And so I saw, I absolutely saw, I mean, it was midnight. I don't know. It could have been 1.30, 2 o'clock. I don't know because, I mean, we were in there for a while. But, I mean, the heavens just opened up and I just saw the light. You know, I saw the light. And so, um... The condemner is in your head. The criticizer is in your head. The one that you feel is revoking your ability. The one that you feel is revoked, taking your permission from you and keeping you in the box. It is in your head. It is not real. It is a habit of thought that has to be broken. And, and I pray for you. I pray for you and I ask you to pray for me because it's so easy to get a revelation. I, I had a blog about that. It's so easy to, to, there's a gnat in here, to get a revelation and not live the revelation. So it's not just about what we know, it's about what we know and do. You know, that's what obedience is. It's not enough to just know what the word says. God says, hearken, hear it and do it. And so, um... I mean, just such a free weekend. Um, Queen Sheba, in her boldness. Sharia Harris, in her, you know, just femininity. And just, you know, girlfriend was, there is a... <clears throat> and I am not going to let the spirit of perfection keep me from posting this video. I'm going to post it with the net and with me smacking myself in the nose. So Sharia Harris from Alabama, you know, I mean, she was... Did I say, this is deja vu. She was scatting. Anyway, I don't know if I said that or not or if that just happened in my head. Um, DC was so himself. I mean, this is like a country black man. It's like I met Aaron Neville. You know, I met him. And he, he plays the guitar so beautifully. In Queens, he is so himself. I mean, he is so, I mean, just I call him rocking Queens. You know, because he was just going back and forth, just delivering, just, you know, just talking. Just talking, just sharing himself. And Josephus, the one who, you know, the, the, the one who envisioned it all and, and created the platform out of his desire to hear others and be heard himself. And so it's so, this is a season, this is a season, and, you know, you can't look at one of my videos without me coming to the season of it being time. This is the season of being. And so people are so quick to say, do you I say be you be yourself no matter what the brand says if it says you know that I mean you're this is erotic and this is what it's supposed to be if it says you know this is whatever it says it is so not the control piece unless we allow it to be and so you know go 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 and be. And I'll see you. Elaine Odessa.com.